Hello! If you're anything like me, this time of year is a really busy and sometimes stressful one. And although I still like to try and find time to just, you know, get in my craft room and make things, it is increasingly difficult as we get closer and closer to Christmas. So today I'm just going to be showing you quite a simple um, idea for, for decorating a bauble. Um, we're going to be using a polystyrene ball for this. You can use any size you want. Um, this one that I've got is around about mm, sort of six and a half, seven centimeters, about six, seven centimeters diameter. You can um, go bigger if you want. I wouldn't recommend going much smaller. I think it would get quite fiddly. But it might be just nice, you know, if you, if you think I, I've got half an hour to go and do something and you can go and make one of these and that you can hang them on the tree, you can give them as a gift. I'm sure we could make these in a sort of non-Christmas um, design for, for other times of the year. But it, it's a nice and simple project to make. So for this, we don't need too many things. We need our polystyrene ball. We need a small ruler or a tape measure. A pencil, a felt tip pen, a knife, a pair of scissors, a scrap of paper. I've got um, some glass headed pins. You could just use a sort of standard dressmaker pin, but the ones with the with the ball on the end are a little bit um, better. You'll need two contrasting pieces of fabric. I've got some Christmas designs here, Christmas colours, and you'll want some narrow cord or ribbon or twine something you know you'll see as we go on um have a look what you've got the other thing we'll need you need something with a narrow but blunt edge now i'm going to be using this is just a plastic palette knife you could use like a credit card or like a table knife a, a, a butter knife nothing with a sharp edge you don't want to be, you don't want to be able to cut you need something that's just narrow and smooth to be able to push into a groove that we've cut and all will become clear as, as we get on with it so to start with we need to mark out panels onto our polystyrene ball and then we will be making a paper template now, a lot of polystyrene balls, if you take a look at them, will have a line um, where they've sort of been moulded all the way round the circumference. And this one indeed does. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. Difficult to see. And it also has a sort of a dot where the top and the bottom is. Sort of north and south pole and the equator. Look at it that way. But we want to measure around this circumference and I took a piece of string earlier on and put it round and I worked out that this was 18 centimetres all the way round and I want to divide it into six so I'm going to be measuring three centimetres a time and just marking a dot. I'm just going to do that with my felt tip pan. So putting a dot to begin with I'm just going to take my ruler and kind of roll it around and when I get to three centimetres I'm just going to make another little mark. When I get to six centimetres another mark and so on until I get all the way back round. Now if it's not a hundred percent accurate doesn't matter as long as it's close enough So I should have six evenly spaced segments around the circumference and I'm just going to just mark them a little bit more clearly now that I can put my ruler down. Now we need to cut some grooves going from the top centre to the bottom centre, so sort of north pole to south pole, in a straight line passing through each of those six marks so that we're going to divide our ball into six segments. And for that, you want to use a craft knife and you want to go in about a centimetre. Now, I'm using um, this scalpel that I've got and I quite like the fact that where the handle meets the blade, there's about a centimetre of tip. Um, so I'm going to use that as my gauge. You could always make a little mark on a, a knife blade, put a little bit of tape around it just so you don't want to go in too far. 
If you feel more comfortable, you can draw a line and then follow the line. But it's fairly straightforward to sort of follow from that dot down to the centerpiece and then down either from the centerpiece to the end or flip it over and go back from the other side to the center. And I'm just going to just going to eyeball it. Do you mind your fingers? Obviously, you're using a sharp knife. And if you just sort of line it up, get those two marks in a line of sight, you can quite easily join them up. And that has created a groove. And we're going to repeat that for each of the marks that we made. So it gives us six fairly even segments. So there you can see we have six equal sections um, round like a beach ball and we and we have a nice groove of about a centimetres deep all the way round. So you can put your knife to one side, put that out of the way so you don't cut yourself. The next thing we need to do is make ourselves a little template so that we can see, um, so we can cut the fabric basically. And the easiest way to do this is just get a scrap of paper. This is just sort of some printer paper. Felt tip pen again. Something that, not a permanent marker. You don't want it to dry in here. We want to be able to transfer the ink over. So that's why I'm using a felt tip pen. And I'm just going to outline one of these segments. And then just transfer that ink onto the paper just by pressing it in place. And that just gives us rough idea. It's close enough. We just need to know the basic size and shape of that segment. And I'm going to cut that out, leaving an overhang of somewhere between half a centimetre to a centimetre. So we need enough spare fabric to tuck in. Always better to, to have slightly more if, you, if you're unsure. Once you've done it a few times, you'll know how neat you can be. And you may get away with a slightly narrower border. Um, but to begin with, make sure you've got plenty of overhang. If it's too much, you can always trim it away. If it's too short, if it's too small, you'll have to recut your fabric again. So we need to make six pieces, um, cut six pieces of fabric using our template, three from each piece. And I'm just going to place this on, draw around with my pencil and cut it out. And I'll be right back as soon as I've done that. Now that I've cut out my six panels of fabric, um, it's time to start putting them on onto the ball. Now you can pop a little pin in at the top and the bottom if you want to hold it in place. Um, but with this size, it's quite straightforward um, to do it without. You just need to line up your fabric fairly centrally over one of the panels. And then looking to just see where the groove is on either side, use the edge of your palette knife or whatever you're using just to tuck the fabric in. And working a bit on one side and then a bit on the other side to keep the fabric as straight as you possibly can. Just ease it into that groove.
once you've done it a couple of times it will become a lot easier um, and you'll know exactly how hard you can press and you can always just um, pop it back out again if, if it's gone a little bit twisted if you've got too much fabric if you think there that like that there's too much just pop it out and take your scissors and just trim a little bit as I say to start with you want if anything your piece of fabric to be a little bit too big because you can always trim it down for a better fit And when you've done one panel, pick up your other, your opposite piece of fabric and put that into the next section in exactly the same way. And just continue alternating your fabric as you go around. I mean you can of course use the same fabric on every panel, you can use a different fabric on each panel if you want to. You could, you could divide the ball up into four panels or if it was a large one into eight panels. It's entirely up to you, there are many ways of customising this. But you're just going to continue to tuck the fabric in working your way around until you've filled the ball and I'll be back when I've done that. So here's my bauble covered in fabric. Um, a little bit messy in, in the very top and bottom but don't worry about that, that's going to be hidden. Next you want to take your piece of cord. You want, for this size ball, about a metre. Again, trial and error, you get to go round your ball three times and have a hanging loop. So depending on the size of the ball that you're working on, again, better to have too much than not enough. And you want to just fold it in half, first of all, roughly find where the centre point is. And starting at, at one end, you want to wrap that around opposite grooves. And again, this will help keep it nice and tidy. When you get to the other end, so to twist it round each other and go down a second set of grooves. And again, when we get down to the bottom, just twist it round itself and go up the final pair of grooves. And then when we get back up to the top there, we can tie this in a knot. You want to keep it pulled fairly tightly. And then your ends, that will become your hanging loop. So just knot those up at the top as well and just trim the ends off evenly and just to finish off just for added security if you take a couple of glass headed pins and pop one through that cord at the bottom and another one down through that cord at the top and that will just help hold that in place 
and just finishes them off quite nicely. So there's one that I've done, obviously traditional Christmas colours again. Got a couple more. This one here, I've used some gold sparkly twine and a little red pen. Festive um, feel to that one. This one I've used a gingham and a polka dot and then used some like garden twine for a more rustic feel. And if you want to go really over the top, um, this one here, I've used some cream fabric. I've used some linen and covered that with um, some crocheted lace fabric. And then I've wrapped around a strip of lace and just attached some little pearl buttons with beads just for added interest all the way around the bauble. So I hope you can see there's, there's plenty of options for using up little scraps that you've got, making different styles, different colourways um, to fit whatever colour scheme you've got at Christmas. So hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and feel free to leave me some comments below. But for now, um, I don't know if I shall be doing another video next week. It's getting close to Christmas. We'll see how it goes. Um, but for those of you that are celebrating Christmas, if I don't get a chance to wish you a Merry Christmas before, have a wonderful Christmas and fantastic New Year. But for now, that's all. So bye.